Well, civilization will have to continue waiting for true bionic people. And the idea of being able to grow humans in a petri dish is still not exactly perfected. But the recent breakthrough at Duke University involving actual human muscle tissue being grown in the lab will change the way diseases are researched and treated. Then, who knows what it might lead to? Let's welcome to Midpoint the Rooney Family Associate Professor of Bioengineering at Duke University's Pratt School of Engineering, Nenit Bursich, joins us today. Professor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Why is this such a breakthrough? When we talk about this, I see scientists are excited. What specifically did this manage to accomplish that's so astounding? Well, this is the uh, first time that uh, we made in a dish uh, human muscle tissue that can actually contract uh, like a real muscle. And this has been done through a combination of bioengineering and cell culture techniques that allowed us to generate uh, a muscle tissue that now we, we are able to use for different tests. When we talk about creating it in addition, please, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not even going to pretend to be one here, but was this made from actual human tissue or is this completely artificial? This is made from uh, small biopsies, needle biopsies that are routinely taken in clinics from patients. And they give about 50 milligrams, a very small, uh, almost needle point size of a, a tissue. What we do then, we... Um, basically take these tissues apart and uh, this, uh, take the cells out and these cells are able to grow and then to put together in a specific environment, the, the, the almost like a jello-like environment, come together and make a muscle tissue that can contract. So this is a real uh, live tissue made from patients' uh, cells. How long then does it take from the time you do these mini biopsies to put a muscle piece of muscle tissue together? that could then be, and I, I know I'm extrapolating far here, but could then be used in either experiments or maybe even used on a human subject? Yeah, it takes about three weeks to get uh, from this small biopsy to a significant number of cells, and then another two to four weeks to make these muscle tissues. And uh, a beauty of that is that we can take a very small sample from human muscle and then generate thousands of these small tissues that then can be used for different tests. Is it true that the, the difficult thing here is because we saw a little piece of video here where we saw the muscle actually contracting, that's the electronic vibration, I would guess, or the electronic stimuli that's going through it, that when you were to, if you were to grow them before in a lab, that this is maybe what was missing. If you don't have that, then it's not really good muscle tissue? Well, um, traditionally, cells are taken in a culture and then just put basically on a plate where they grow. In that configuration, these cells cannot contract. But if you put them inside this uh, specific uh, uh, hydrogel-like material and then grow them in this configuration where they, are, um, they have mechanical forces, they have a soup of different nutrients, under specific conditions, they take their natural... Um, properties in, in terms of being able to contract, both when you stimulate them by electrical pulse, which is what you've seen in that video, but also when you apply the chemicals that in our body normally uh, uh, nerves and neurons supply to have our muscle activated. Professor, so I've only this, got about a minute yeah. left, and I know part of what you're doing here, using this to test new drugs, study diseases, but I, I play a little science fiction here. How long before we can get to the point where you can grow enough human tissue, enough human muscle here to perhaps repair or even replace human muscle and rebuild it in people who need it so desperately? Well, um, we are currently at the point that likely this could be used for very small muscles, such as some ocular muscles or muscles in the, in, in, in the face. But for really big uh, muscles, there is a one problem, which is how to make vascular supply, which is still hasn't been resolved. A lot of scientists are trying to resolve that, and until that's resolved, we will still be limited in the size of a muscle that we can make. Uh, when will that happen? Um, we will see. You know, it will, it, it, there's a lot of people working on that, and, and the sooner the better. At that point, there will be no limit, almost no limit to the size of a muscle that we could be able to make. Don Professor, I am fascinated by this because I can see so many people out there who suffer, for, uh, suffer from degenerative muscle diseases who will be watching this, and the, the medical benefits it could bring to them would be absolutely astounding. I'm, I'm just fascinated. We're going to keep up on this, by the way. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the achievement.
it here, and I hope that we're able to move this ahead as quickly as possible. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Absolutely astounding. We spend so much time considering what kids are learning from books. Maybe we need to spend more time worrying about their emotional intelligence. Let's talk about intelligence, if you will, in this society. It's coming up right here on Midpoint.